Let's go back in time. Back to the 1870s when there were as many as 200 gold mines in San Diego's backcountry, here's one that's still around and here we go. Carl Nelson is taking us into the Eagle Mine, which his family has owned for more than a half century. And this mine, by the way, was still producing gold up until the early 1940s. This is where the gold's found in these veins of quartz, not the rock around it. If you were a miner and you wanted to find gold, you had to follow those veins of quartz back farther into the mountain, creating hundreds of feet of tunnels as you went. There's five levels above and five below us. We're in the middle level of the mine. Walking through here, you get a sense of what it must have been like. This was hard rock mining, and this was hard work. The tunnels snaked through the mountain, and you can imagine the men who labored here every day, digging, drilling, and blasting with small charges of explosives, all to extract gold that in the early days of this mine was worth about $17 an ounce, something like one one-hundredth of what it is today. So we talked with Carl Nelson. We wondered, what about that? Has all the gold been taken out of here? There's still gold here, it's just this is old fashioned today. Modern mining is, you know, large companies and they move mountain ranges, they don't dig tunnels. The Eagle Mine, though, was never a big corporate operation. It was one of dozens of mines scattered from Julian down to Banner, and it provided work for a few men. Maybe a dozen, but not all at the same time, maybe in shifts, you know. Because underground you're working in confined areas. Yes, confined is a good word for it. And if you're curious what it must have been like, there are clues everywhere here inside this mine. The leftover remnants of what was a going operation up until the Second World War. Here's the mine office, hundreds of feet within the mountain, looking like somebody just walked away from it one day 70 years ago. Connected to the outside world only by a telephone. An air-powered drill that when operated must have made a deafening noise in this rock tunnel, left at the spot where it was last used and a lift used to transport miners and equipment from one floor to the next, the instructions for sounding alarm bells still posted, all of this buried deep within a mountain. When Carl takes people through here, he sometimes finds out it's not for those who hate close places. Some people are claustrophobic, yeah. Yeah, you, you usually tell, you turn on sweaty and get all white, you know. You can't tell from in here, but really what we have here are two mines hooked together by tunnels the Eagle Mine and the High Peak Mine, which came in from the other side of the mountain. But from inside, it's just one long series of tunnels. And something else, as you walk toward the center of the mountain, you notice you're going very slightly uphill. It's so the ore cars that ran on rails could be pushed out easily when they were full and uphill when they were coming back in empty. And also so water could run out too, Carl says. He still meets people every once in a while who have worked in a place like this. Oh yeah, and I talked to a lot of, I meet a lot of interesting old timers too that have done this as, as a living, they, you know, fill me in on stuff that I don't know even. There have been accidents, two miners died here many years ago, and earthquakes, some big ones, but over 140 years of being here, it's rock solid, and that's good to know, especially when Carl turns off the lights, just so visitors can experience the darkness. I mean, total darkness. Quiet too, very very quiet. A lot of times, like, you supposedly if you go in there and sit long enough and you're still enough, eventually it starts sounding like rain and what you're hearing is like the dust fall. It took a certain kind of person to do this, work in here under these conditions, breathing the rock dust, loading the ore, pushing it outside to the stamping mill, and doing it year after year. You kind of admire their spirit and enterprise. This was not a big mine as commercial operations go, but it paid its way all told, maybe $100,000 worth of gold was removed from the Eagle and High Peak mines. And that was in the days when that really was a lot of money. You think about that in a place like this, what working days must have been like here, and how after eight or ten hours drilling, blasting, and hoping that the gold continued, how welcome must have been the light at the end of the tunnel. Hi guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click on the subscribe button so you can see more videos like this one.